I'm with Zahava folks from here in Jerusalem. Now, were you born here in Jerusalem? I was born in Jerusalem on uh, September uh, 1935. Wow. And do you remember Independence Day here in Israel? I remember many things before. I remember things that there was a, a riot of the Arab from uh, 36 to 39. So I think that I can remember from uh, 38, 39, I lived in the border of Jerusalem near Sheikh Jarrah Arab area, and they, they shot over our mm-hmm. house. And I remember one night my mother took me from my bed to a room that was more safe. And I forgot to take my uh, doll. And I began to cry that I want the doll because they will kill the doll. Mm. And my mother crawled on four and she went to the room and she brought me the doll. And my father was not with us. He was on guard, he was in the Agana. There was three underground in the British time. It was the Agana and he was guarding in the old city of Jerusalem in the Jewish quarter. So, so this is all during British this, mandate period? These are things that I remember from my early, early childhood. Yeah. Because I remember how my mother went on four, you know, like yeah. a dog. She went to the room to bring me the doll. And this I, can, I remember till now. And this was during British mandate period, wasn't it? Of course, because the mandate here in Israel was from 1917. Mm. November 1917, the British conquered all the area here, from the Turkish. So I was born in the British time. I had a Palestinian birth certificate. I don't know where it is, but many times I I showed it that I I am a real Palestinian because I was born in the British time and there was not a Palestine Mm. then, but Palestine, I-A-I, Eretz Israel. It was both names. And do you remember Independence Day when Israel became a nation? Of course. It was in the night and I woke up. My parents were near the radio. We had the only radio in the building and all the neighbors came there to hear what's going on in the United Nations. And I woke up from uh, screaming. My parents, uh, the neighbors and everyone I heard screaming. And I was very afraid because I thought some days before there was a thief that went to a neighbor and she screamed all night. Mm. She was afraid. She came home and she saw all the house that was Balagan. So I I thought that it's again the same thing. But my parents told me to come up, to wash myself, to change clothes, and we are going. And uh, we went till the... I don't know how you say it in English, Binyanea Sukhnut. It was a, a bait alumni, you know, in Kerna Kayemet Street. There was there the bureau of all the Zionistic important par- parties. So we went there, and Ben Gurion went outside, and he began to speak. I didn't understand anything, but I saw that everyone is very. I was then, I was 12. So did you actually get to see Ben Gurion? I saw him many times. Yeah, yeah. I saw him many times because he liked to speak all also to children, to students, mm. and I saw him. But uh, we didn't took it too too seriously, you know, because we thought, top, oh, okay, a politician. He likes to speak because yeah. we thought that the important thing is to go in the Haganah or to be a farmer you know, in kibbutzim and so on. And uh, all the polit- politicians, you know, they spoke. So we they didn't have much respect for them as children. Yeah. And of course, as Israel became a nation, the Arab nations around attacked Israel. So it must yeah. have been a very scary time, was it? In Jerusalem, especially, it was very scary. You know, at one day after the... In the morning after the 29th of November, 47 when it was declaration of the country in the United Nations, Arab attacked a bus that came from Netanya to Jerusalem. They attacked them, six people were dead, and many others were wounded. Mm. And this began the independence war. Mm. 
and they began to shoot. We lived in the border of Jerusalem, and, and near us, on the other side of the road, was an Arab quarter, and there was also the school of policemen. It was vis-a-vis -vis us, and they began to shoot over us, mm. and we suffered shooting from uh, shooting from guns. But after that, they began with bombs. And we had, on the 18th, I remember it, on the 18th of May, 48, it was before the declaration of the uh, country from Ben-Gurion that it was in my 15th of May. Mm. We had to flew from home because they were bombing and we went from one shelter to another to the middle of the city, of the town. And all the area was abandoned. It was uh, without citizen because all of us, we had to flew. Mm. from home. Now there was um, the Hadassah convoy uh, and that was attacked. Tell us a bit about that. You, were, you yeah, saw that. I saw it. Hadassah is on the Mount Scopus. Between Mount Scopus and where I lived was the Sheikh Jarrah, the Arab quarter of Sheikh Jarrah. And the, it was bombing and shooting all the time. So the children, we were in the stairs room, you know, not to be outside where there was the shooting, and a neighbor came and uh, told us, you know, now the uh, convoy is here near the house, come and see, and we went to her house and we looked from the window and we saw the buses, the ambulances and the buses of uh, the convoy near the house, and they began to go to the Mount Scopus. So we continued to play, you know, in the stairs room. And suddenly another neighbor came and said that they are attacking the convoy. And we went on the roof. There was no shooting then, because all the shooting was towards the convoy. And we saw the three buses, ambulance and buses, three of them that was on fire. And we heard all the shooting. And th there was a wind from the east that came to us, and we felt gummy. You know, on fire, we felt it. And I knew some people that were killed wow. in the, this convoy. It was a father of one friend of mine that was the driver of a bus from Amkasher, and a father of another boy that studied with him in school. So I felt after that very attached to the convoy. And from the time that Adassa is making ceremony for it in memorial. I am going to it even before the Sixth Day War in Adassa and Karim. We have done it near the window of Shagal of the synagogue. We have done their, uh, the ceremony. And after the Sixth Day War, after a year, we have the corner there and we make there in the Adassa Haratsufim the memorial yeah. ceremony. Now, during the Six Day War in 1967, you were obviously a lot older then and able to understand more. Do you remember when war broke out on that day? Of course. I think it was 10 days after I had my uh, third child. So I was at home with the child and my husband was in the army. My brother, of course, he was in the, a pilot in the Air Force. And there began bombing Jerusalem. There was no alarm, anything, but we heard the bombing. After that came the alarm, because no one waits to it. And we were in Jerusalem. We were for six days in the shelter. I was with the children. One was five-year-old, the other one was three-year-old, and the baby of ten days. And I was in the shelter with them, with other neighbors. Every building then has a shelter down. And he has also a well, every house. After independence war, it was a rule in Jerusalem that every new house that is built has to have a shelter and also a well. Because in the independence war, we didn't have water in Jerusalem. So now every house, I have it here also in this house. I have a well down. Was it a shock when the Arab nations attacked in 1967? Seven. I don't remember it. It was a, sh a shock because we are used that, it, that we are not in a safe place, mm. that every time there is something else in another place. So they attack many times. They at attack villages. They attack buses and things like that. And they, we had groups in the army. Have you heard about 
101, the group of Arik Sharon. At uh, 54, he took young boys from kibbutzim in uh, Emek Israel, young uh, soldiers, and he made a group, a commando, that uh, went to Ritiliet, Lincoln, places when Arab came from them, from a village that Arab came to attack our place, they went to the, this place to attack again, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was 101, Commando 101. So all the time we had troubles with the Arab. So it was a surprise that we have in six days that we finished the war Mm. in six days. Very quickly. Very quickly. And of course, one of the good things about the Six Day War was you actually got more land because you were able to get the Western Wall and East Jerusalem as well. I was against all the area, Yehuda Shomron, that uh, all the religious are going there, I, w- I was against it. On my opinion, you know, and Ben Gurion said, give them back everything, only after that we have to debate about Jerusalem. But give everything, because I think we have enough land in the Galilee and in the Negev, and they can build their villages and cities and so on, and I think it's written in the Bible. Okay, many things is written in the Bible. So what? So this is my opinion. There are many other the things otherwise, you know. What did you work as in life here in Israel? Uh, what what I, I have done, I was a nurse. And I studied after secondary school. I studied three years in Jerusalem. It's a story. Maybe once we shall go and I will show you. Yeah. So I studied nursing, and after that I went to the army as a nurse. And I had soldiers from the Sinai War from uh, 56, mm-hmm. burnt soldiers and so on, that I treated them in Ramban Street, in Ramban uh, Hospital, Rambam mm. Hospital in Haifa. And after that, when I came after army, I, I started to be a social nurse, and I was a social nurse for many years. And after I had children and so on, I went to work a little bit in the hospital and in this time, in the night and evening, and this time I studied in the university and I became for 20 last years that I worked, I was a teacher in the nursing school of Adassa. Has living here in Israel been a very positive experience? What I want to tell you, that my beginning career as a social nurse was in Ma'abarot. Ma'abarot was camps of tents for newcomers because people when they came after the independence war they came all the people from the camps from Europe and they came people from Iraq and Yemen you know for many countries people came and we didn't have where to put them at first they put them in villages of the Arabs that flew away from Israel but they came more I think that in one year we doubled our number. When the independence war began, we were in Israel 600,000 people. And after a year we were more than a million and a half. So people were living in a tents and I don't know how we say, a building from uh, asbest or things like that. Mm. And I worked there as a social nurse. I volunteered there also as a student in the in school. We went in volunteering to help those people to teach Hebrew, the newcomers, to teach writing and mathematics, you know, to women, uh, Yemen women, they didn't know at all to read or to write. And after that, I work as a social nurse. I work there wow. many years in, in the, it was my Beret al it was the uh, Asbestonim in Kiryat Yovel. And I feel that all my life, I contribute to the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Israel has always been a turbulent place. We've just had this massacre and genocide on October the 7th. How did that make you feel? You've seen so many things in the past. How did that make you feel that just even, you know, even just now we've had a, an was, attack? It was alarm in Jerusalem and I heard the bombing. The bombing was uh, that we shoot what they sent us, you know. Shooting the rockets down. It's not, yes, it's not that the bombing had fallen, explosion. It turned me to the time that I was in the shelter in the independence war. And I thought about it that... 
I had this experience, and now small children have the same experience. Mm. And from then I'm very pessimistic what's going on in this country. Mm. I'm very pessimistic about the future of the country. And there is not a day that I'm not crying. Because if I see in the newspaper, yesterday one soldier died, the day before two soldiers died, and it was friendly fire, yeah. they say, because they, they wanted to shoot a building that they thought that there is their uh, terrorist, mm. and they were there, the, our soldiers. So it was friendly fire? Yeah, yeah. friendly fire. Yeah. So, you know, every day, and for the family and for the soldiers and so on, it's... It's the end of the world. So you've seen many disasters and things that have happened to Israel. How can Israel deal with the situation today? We have many hostages in Gaza. What would you do in this situation? I will give them all the terrorists that we have, everyone, mm. and uh, to bring everyone back home. Mm. Even if I'm so afraid that many of them are not alive anymore. And the other one, I think that it will take years after years, you know, to rehabilitate them. We've been through these many wars. Do you think there can be peace in the future? No, because it's a war of religious war. Mm. It's not only about the piece of land. It's a war. Yeah. And the, the Islam, he hates everything. He hates also the Christian, and the, the Christian will suffer from them, you know, in the future, mm. in Europe and everywhere. Mm. And now just recently you were actually able to go to a memorial for the Hadassah convoy attack that you saw. How was that experience for you being able to go to that memorial? I am happy that people remember this. They think that we have to remember the past because from the past we can maybe we can learn from the future. Mm. And I'm going in honor of the people that died, you know, on vain. People went to the hospital, doctors and nurses and so on, to help other people, you know. They didn't went to, to the Mount Scopus to have war with the Arab or something like that. And uh, many, many clean blood. It's important to remember these stories, isn't it? I think that it's very important, and for that I'm going there, and after that I'm telling the story to the British women, to the German women, and they were, whenever I can, to young people and so on, I'm telling the story. People don't believe. So doors have opened for you to be able to share your story to other people? I'm telling it. I'm telling my own story, yeah. you know. I'm telling my own story. Yeah. And I think... Look, I have four children, three of them are not in Israel anymore. Mm. And I was very angry about it. I felt as if they betrayed me mm. and betrayed the country, you know. But they went with work, you know. Two of them went because of work, the third one because of fighting against of injustice. Mm. And she's fighting for justice for all the world, yeah. you know. Yeah. So this is her way. She's already 52. Mm. Don't think that it's something of the adolescent thing. When I say to her something, she has immediately an answer, and I will tell you what. My grandfather, my mother's father, he was a communist. He was a revolutionary in the first revolution in Russia on 1907, and he was a friend of Gogol, Gogol is a Russian author. He was in respondent with Karl Marx. He was a real communist, mm. revolutionary. Yeah. My grandfather. He was wounded in this uh, revolution, and he was three years in the hospital, and they cut his leg slowly by slowly because they didn't have then antibiotics. So every time they cut more, and uh, my mother told me that she has a leg from wood. So I told th those stories to my children. Mm. So my daughter says to me, what do you want from me? I have it in the genes. <laughs> I have a grand-grandfather that he was a revolutionary. Yeah. And you also always was anti-many things, you know. So be quiet. This yeah. is what she says to me. So what can I say? Yeah. She has the genes. What is your prayer? For Israel today? Peace. Peace inside us and outside. And I don't see that it will be. Because we never had five years of silence. We didn't have it. Peace, this is the important thing.
We have a wonderful country and uh, really look our scientific, our authors, our doctors, everything. The Jews are always, we have more than 20 Nobel Prize people that receive it. We are a small point in all the world. We are, I think, 12 or 14 million Jews in the world mm. at all. Maybe more, I don't know. But not more than 20, 20 millions, if we shall say it, maximum. Mm. And look how many Nobel Prizes we have. Mm. And we contribute very much to all the world in medicine, in the ways that everyone goes now with the ways that we don't use anymore Atlas. We have the ways. Yeah. And so many things is invention of Israeli. Mm. So we contribute so much to the world, and maybe for that the world hates us. Mm. I don't know. Well, Zahava, thank you very much for sharing today. Okay, I hope that you can make something from all this salad. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> very good. Thank you. Yeah.